our people for thousands of years have understood the power and energy of what flows from this land. And now we're starting to use one of our own resources to help filter our history down to all Australia. That resource is spring water, sourced from deep below the foothills of Wollumbin, an ancient Moonga situated here in the heart of northern New South Wales. The water around this area, in this region, that's a very embedded part of who we are and, you know, that connection to land for our Aboriginal people, water is an important part of that for us. <laughs> She's missing it, I think. Yeah. That little an important that. part that has now oh, seen really water right. bringing black and white Australia to work together. This is a traditional country of my, my grandmother and there's an old traditional camp here and Sean's great-great-grandfather came up this way and um, settled up here and our mob's been, um, had a good relationship since then. One that has now led to them forming an alliance of a different kind. We started bottling water on the property and we wanted to do something with the local community as well. And so I've often heard stories about these fellas down there, all good stories. <laughs> Together we, we started the brand called Yaru Water. Yaru is, means the rock and this water that flows through this country, these mountains around here, that's where it comes through and comes through the rock and you know the special qualities of it and even recognised by the science of it. Yep. The, the analysis of the water here, the minerals and things that they come from the rock. Since launching in 2013, Yaru water is now found in supermarkets across Australia and even at a luxury hotel on the Gold Coast. But for Carl, whilst there are commercial benefits to this relationship, there's a bigger kaupapa behind Yaru Water, with more than half of its profit going back to the Aboriginal people. It's been really, really good um, for our community, to not only just the, the business side of it, but the connections and the relationships, and continue and continue and come to the land. You know, the water was the beginning. We, we really want to do things for community, and, and we wanted to um, do cultural education. We want to make sure that our younger generations are still connected to land and part of that and, and Yarra really made that possible in a lot of ways, you know, providing that platform and, and, and the resources. It's allowed them to set up the Yaru Foundation and already it's having a positive impact on the Aboriginal community. Through the Yaru Foundation we'll look at enterprise for remote communities. We're going to look at supporting those kind of things, uh, social enterprise and development projects and, and we'll look at we're looking at those and we're in the process of doing that. You know, we want to see some of the communities in, in the most remote parts of Australia. We want them to have the opportunities that we had. And we know, we know what works for our, our people. Last week, Kyle took us out west and we went to a few out, communities out west and we took water samples. And those samples have now been sent to Perth to be analysed. And we'll identify any problems with, with a particular site and we, we hope to set up our first filtration for a community out there. So they'll have premium spring water in their local community. And that, that's just a flow on from the commercial side of Yaru. Of course, if Yaru is not successful commercially, it can't afford to do that on the cultural side. Yeah. We can see this is a, a great relationship between you two. Is this common here in Australia, Sean? I think we've set a precedent. It's been absolutely great. An eye-opener for me to learn more about Aboriginal culture, and that in itself is quite incredible. It works very well. It's a lovely sink to two cultures.